then after passing through a trillion compass. Before the test, read a hundred billion compass and now it reads a trillion compass. This person passes through such a long time and then he teaches them to dwell in the anagamin fruit. He teaches the living beings to dwell in the third fruit. The third fruit is the stage of the non-returner where one doesn't even return to the desire realm to undergo birth and death. Then after passing through a hundred Nayuta million compass, a Nayuta is even greater than a hundred thousand. He teaches them to dwell in the Ahat fruit, the fourth fruit. Ahat means worthy of offerings, killer of thieves and without birth. And after passing through a hundred thousand trillion compass, this is even longer than the other periods of time. He teaches them to dwell in the path of a Pratyeka Buddha. Pratyeka Buddha is a Sanskrit word. During the time there is a Buddha in the world, the Pratyeka Buddha is called one enlightened to conditions. When there is no Buddha in the world, he is called a solitarily enlightened one, disciple of the Buddha. What is your opinion? Dharma Wisdom Bodhisattva calls out. You disciple of the Buddha, what do you think of the meaning of this? How do you feel about this? What impressions do you have about this? Isn't this person's merit and virtue a lot? This person has made offerings to living beings for such a long time and then teaches them all kinds of Dharma doors such as the four dhyanas, the four stations of emptiness, the first, second, third and fourth fruits of the Ahad path and the path of the Pratyeka Buddha. Wouldn't you say his merit and virtue is a lot? Doesn't he have much merit and virtue? The heavenly ruler said, Disciple of the Buddha, only the Buddha can know this person's merit and virtue. Only the Buddha is able to know how much his merit and virtue is, not come up to a Dharma wisdom Bodhisattva said, Disciple of the Buddha, this person's merit and virtue compared with the merit and virtue of the Bodhisattva who has first brought forth the mind, does the hundredth part. If one defines the merit and virtue of the Bodhisattva who has first brought merit and virtue acquired by the above person, does not equal one of these parts, nor a thousandth part. A thousandth part, not to speak of one hundredth, it doesn't reach one thousandth the merit and virtue of the Bodhisattva who has first brought forth the mind, nor a hundred thousandth part. The merit and virtue of this person does not even come up to one one hundred thousandth of the merit and virtue of the Bodhisattva who has first brought forth the mind up to and including for one part in an Upanishad come up to means going from the very smallest part up to the very greatest point. This does not equal a single part of the smallest nor a single part of the largest numbers state above. It doesn't reach the tiniest part of the merit and virtue of the merit of the Bodhisattva who has first brought forth their mind. Sutra, why is this? Disciple of the Buddha, when all Buddhas first bring forth their mind, they do not do so merely for the sake of making offerings of all kinds of musical instruments to all the living beings in the Asamhya world systems in the ten directions, doing so for a hundred compass up to and including a hundred thousand Nayuta million compass. They do not bring forth the body mind merely to teach all of those living beings to cultivate the five precepts, the ten paths of good karma, or to teach them to dwell in the four dhyanas, the four unlimited minds, the four formless concentrations or to teach them to attain the Srota Pana fruit, the Sagridagamin fruit, the Anagamin fruit, 
the Ahat Foot or the Pratika Buddha Path. Commentary on the various analogies above describe how nothing can compare with the merit and virtue of first bringing forth the body mind. Why is this? Disciple of the Buddha, Dharma Wisdom Bodhisattva consult. When all Buddhas first bring forth their mind, at the first moment they bring forth their mind. They do not do so merely for the sake of making offering of all kinds of musical instruments to all the living beings in the ten, in ten Asamkhya world systems in the ten directions, doing so for a hundred compass, up to and including a hundred thousand Nayuta median compass. It is not because of this that they bring forth their body mind. They do not bring forth their body mind merely to teach all of those living beings. They do not bring forth their body mind just to teach all of those living beings who dwell in the world to cultivate the five precepts, the ten paths of good karma, the five precepts prohibit killing, stealing, indulging in sexual misconduct, false speech, and taking intoxicants, and the ten paths of good karma are not killing, not stealing, not indulging in sexual misconduct, being without greed, hatred, and stupidity, not speaking falsely, deceitfully, vulgarly, or slanderously. Also teach them to dwell in the four dhyanas, the four unlimited minds, kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy, and renunciation, the four formless concentrations, which are the station of boundless emptiness, the station of boundless consciousness, the station of nothing whatsoever, and the station of neither thought nor non-thought. Or to teach them to attain the Srotam Pana fruit, the first fruit, or to teach them to attain the Sakri Dagamin fruit, the second fruit, or to teach them to attain the Anagamin fruit, the third fruit, or to teach them to attain the, the Ahat fruit, the fourth fruit, or to teach them to attain the Prachika Buddha path that they bring forth their body might is not merely because of these things that they produce the body might. Sutra, but it is for the sake of causing the seed nature of the first commands to never be cut off. It is for the sake of pervading all world systems. It is for the sake of crossing over and liberating the living beings in all world systems. It is for the sake of totally knowing the coming into being and destruction of all world systems. It is not. It is for the sake of totally knowing the defilement and purity of living beings within all world systems. It is for the sake of totally knowing the purity of the self nature of all world systems. It is for the sake of totally knowing the likes, afflictions, and habits in the minds of all living beings. It is for the sake of totally knowing how all living beings die here are reborn elsewhere. It is for the sake of totally knowing all living beings rules and expedient methods. Commentary bring forth the body mind is for the sake of causing the seed nature of the thirst commands to never be cut off. Why do you want to bring forth the body mind? It is because you want to continue the Buddha's wisdom life, thereby causing the Buddha seed not to be severed. So he says, but it is for the sake of crossing, um, it is for the sake of casing the seed, mature of the first camels to never be cut off, to cause the Buddha's lamp of wisdom to shine everywhere in all world systems. It is for the sake of pervading all world system. One brings forth the Buddha mind in order to cause the Buddha Dharma to pervasively reach all world system. It is for the sake of crossing over and liberating the li be living beings in all world systems. The Buddha see that all living beings in the Sa world and all the other worlds have much suffering and 
lead to happiness. They sink into confusion and are not awake because they want to cause living beings to live suffering and attain bliss to cut off birth and death and to turn away from the dust and unite with enlightenment. The Buddhas cross over and liberate all living beings in all world systems. This is why they bring forth the Buddha mind. It is for the sake of totally knowing the coming into being and destruction of all world systems. Bodhisattva Buddhas want to know the lifespan of all world, world systems, how all planets come into being, how they dwell, how they are destroyed, and how they return to emptiness. Coming into being and destruction also includes dwelling and emptiness, which refers to the causes and conditions for world systems coming into being, their waiting, their destruction and they are eventually becoming extinct. A world system comes into being, drowns and destroyed and becomes empty. People's lives are a process of birth, old age, sickness and death, which is also called birth, drowning, change and extinction. All of them have their own reasons and causes for being. It is for the sake of totally knowing the defilement and purity of living beings without, within all world systems. It is not the, uh, for it is for the sake of knowing how living beings in all world systems are defined and how they can obtain purity. Their nature flows into emotion and emotion flows into desire. This is a defilement. If they can turn towards the origin and return to the source and turn away from confusion and go back to enlightenment that is purity bodhisattva wants to know the causes and conditions for living beings defilements and the causes and conditions for their purity it for the sake of totally knowing the purity of the self nature of all world systems the buddhas brought forth the buddhi mind to know that they the self-nature and all, all world systems is basically pure. It is for the sake of totally knowing the lacks, afflictions, happiness in the minds of all living beings. Buddha wants to know what the hearts of all living beings desire and delight in. Living beings don't want afflictions. Their afflictions arise because of greed, hatred, and stupidity. If you don't have a heart of greed, hatred, and stupidity, then you have no afflictions. Happies are all of the happiest living beings have learned. It is for the sake of totally knowing how all living beings die here and are born, are reborn elsewhere. It is because the Buddhas want to know the causes and conditions for living beings dying at this place and being reborn at another place. All Buddhas bring forth the Buddha mind because they want to understand the principles and reasons for things. It is for the sake of totally knowing all living beings' rules and expedient methods. It is for the sake of understanding all living beings' rules, that is, their full natures. And what expedient methods to use to teach and transform them that Buddhas bring forth the Buddha mind. Sutra, it is for the sake of totally knowing the activities in the minds of all living beings. It is for the sake of totally knowing all living beings' wisdom in the three periods of time. And it is for the sake of totally knowing all Buddha's state of equality that they bring forth the unsurpassed Buddha mind. Commentary. After hearing the Sutra lecture yesterday, all of you should investigate some more. Were there mistakes in the nature lecture? Was the lecture in harmony with meanings of the Sutra? If, were, if there were mistakes, you should bring up so we can investigate them together to see what is correct. You shouldn't think everything which the drama master lecture lectures 
is the Java must not actually is totally correct. There may be principles which were not spoken very clearly. All of you are intelligent and young people should investigate it together. This is because the Buddha Dharma at Gold Moon Mountain Monastery is the Buddha Dharma of living beings. All desires have here can bring up points so we can in integrate them. That way we can recognize the sutra's principles. You also want to speak all the principles with feeling. You don't want to be rigid, merely understanding the meaning without going deeper. You can't go along with the views of common people. The study of the Buddha Dharma Gold Mountain Monastery is based on the wisdom is not sufficient. Then wait for the future to meet a great good knowing one who can cause your wisdom to produce an abundant brilliance. We should investigate all of the places where I speak incorrectly or where I do not lecture in harmony with the Sutra, when I am not in harmony with the Buddha's mind, or when the lecture is not in harmony with your own mind and the minds of others. It is for the sake of totally knowing the activities in the minds of all living beings. Why do the Buddhas want to bring forth the body mind? Because they feel that all living beings are too confused, so confused that they don't know the Dharma. They wish to know the causes and conditions of the thoughts of all living beings' minds and all the manifestations of their actions. For this reason, the Buddhas bring forth great body mind. It is for the sake of totally knowing all living beings' wisdom in the three periods of time. What do their minds think of? What do their minds think of? Has their wisdom decreased or increased? Has their enlightenment increased or has their confusion grown, grown greater? In the future, the next hour, we see living beings will be enlightened and less confused. A good knowing one who teaches and transforms living beings should know this. The three barriers of time. You can also extend this view to yesterday, today and tomorrow. Or you can look at the past month, the present month and the future month. These are all examples of the three barriers of time. Or you can also call the past year, the present year, year and the future, year, the three periods of time. You can fix the three periods of time as just limited lists, just limited to the past, the present and the future on a broad scale. You may divide it up as you wish. When we lecture the sutras, they shouldn't come alive. You don't want to see things without any flexibility and that the three periods of time are just the past, present and future. What is past time? What is future time? What is the present time? Basically, there weren't any differences. Nothing more than names. Don't be attached to the ideas that the three periods of time are just the three periods of time. You don't want to be transform them. You want to cause the sutra to be like water. If you dig a hole in the east, it flows to the east. If you dig a hole in the west, it flows to the west. It naturally enters anywhere. If you are like this, then you can deeply enter the treasury of sutras and have oceanic wisdom. And it is for the sake of totally knowing all Buddha state of equality. You should know that the state of Buddhas, the state of living beings, and the state of the mind are all equal. They do not differ, so they said, the mind, the Buddha, and living beings. These three are not different. The mind is just the Buddha. The Buddha is just the mind. Because the mind wants to become a Buddha, it becomes a Buddha. Originally, the Buddha was a living being. 
it is because they want to know all of these various relationships that we bring forth the unsurpassed body mind they bring forth the unsurpassed mind in a gentle the way who brings forth the mind is you is them but it's not the buddha nor the bodhisattvas why because the buddhas or bodhisattvas have already brought forth the body mind in the past so we should bring forth the body mind body mind right now